You're watching New Car Spin. This is the Volvo S90 T6. Our design, you can tell because of the different front air dam, the horizontal slats in the grill, these optional 20 inch wheels, the black uh, trim around the wheels, and the um, black mirror caps. I'm borrowing this vehicle and I'm going to take it to Dallas. Looks good. Uh, power trunk. Just giving you a quick rundown in case uh, you're not familiar with Volvos. Lots of room back there. You can get Amazon packages delivered to it. The back seat. It's very spacious. It's like a 7 Series or an S-Class or an A8 back here. Although it doesn't have all the features, like it doesn't have reclining seats as an option, but you can control the front seat, moving it forward and everything. You notice it has the Bowers and Wilkins system for the stereo and obviously a console here storage or sorry an armrest and uh power shades all that so let's take a road trip it doesn't have soft closed doors either but the sticker price the sticker price on this is under sixty thousand so I'm going to apologize for the shaky camera up front because I didn't bring my gimbal. I actually wasn't expecting to do this kind of road trip, but here we are. I have paddles here because it's the R design version. And if you're not familiar with Volvo, I'll give you a quick rundown. This is the main screen. This is on every Volvo. You can go that way for apps and stuff. Built in Pandora, built in Spotify, weather, Google search, all that. You still have your navigation here, right? And then you have... Uh, auto stop start, which keeps the memory of it. So if you keep it off, when you get back in the car, it stays off. Your 360 degree camera, you can zoom in on the rear. Uh, there's your 360. You can choose the camera you want to see. Heated, heated seats, vented seats are optional in the um, inscription package. So this is our design. Inscription is the other direction you can take on this vehicle. So this is the sportier looking one. And it's got these seats instead of the inscription seats. And you can tell because it says our design right there. It would say inscription if it was inscription. And there's slightly different seats in the inscription. And then there's momentum, which is basic stock. And uh, I've got a couple of reviews on the S90 out. And my S90 video uh, has actually been quite popular. So I decided I'm going to do a road trip. Head up display here. Boom. By the way, these windows are tinted. These, this is Xpel 30% all the way around. And it's XPEL 70% on the front. So this is the XR Prime Plus, and this is just the XR Black. And um, it looks really good on this car. And the tint is actually, like, phenomenal. I don't even need my uh, uh, <clears throat> polarized shades. And even though it's a, uh infrared-blocking tint and everything, I can still see the heads up quite clearly. So... Uh, traction control off is here in the screen. We can fold the headrest from here. Back, By the way, those seats back there do fold down into the trunk, so they're completely folding flat. We have our sunshade curtain control, and uh, we can adjust the passenger seat from up here, this passenger seat, right? And corner illuminating lights. So there's a lot of tech in here. It's got pretty much everything you'd want in a very decent road trip vehicle. I mean, it's not a hundred thousand dollar car, but you can get massage seats in the inscription version. So this is more or less like, Hey, I don't need something like completely decked out, but I do, I would like a nice sedan. And here it is supercharged and turbocharged. So it's twin charge is what they call it. Four cylinder, 313 horsepower, 315 horsepower ish and all wheel drive. So very nice interior. Here's the key. That's what it looks like. It's leather. It's, the leather is made to match the leather in the car. It's Napa leather. Uh, yeah. So let's get my seatbelt on and we'll hit the road. And I'll talk to you about some of the features on here. Because it's quite loaded. And it's always fun. Oh yeah, before we go, let's go ahead and look at the trip computer. We're going to reset all that. So you just hold in reset here. I think. Boom. Okay. Trip computer reset. So it's not going to be a total like MPG fest, but we will um, see what we can do on the way up to Dallas. I will have to like skew those numbers when I go stop for lunch. I do have to stop for lunch. 
and I'll probably do that in Waco. In the meantime, let's get the heck out of Austin. I think that guy's getting on the freeway. I know he's not. Cool. All right, and you'll see that speaker up there. That is the tweeter, the front-facing tweeter from the Bowers and Wilkins system. It is the best stereo I've heard in any modern-day car, and I wish I could demo it for you. However, uh, we have Spotify, we have Pandora, both built-in apps. You can obviously stream your Bluetooth from your phone, but no matter what I play here, it's going to get flagged by YouTube. But also, you will not hear the quality of the stereo through your, you know, device that you're watching it on, nor will it record properly on my phone. So just keep that in mind that, uh, you know, if you really wanted to know what the Bowers of Wilkins is like, just go to the dealer and, tr and try it out because it is phenomenal. All right, so we'll just go around here. Speed limit's 55 anyway. Okay, so we'll get on the freeway. I am in comfort mode. There's actually different drive modes. Let's go ahead and turn on the the uh, autopilot assist. So now it's green, which means it's going to be doing the steering. Let me show you the drive modes. You push down on this, and you have the wheel to choose your different modes. We'll signal, get on the freeway here. Merge. We have blind spot assist. Standard on every Volvo now. And even cross traffic. And it will also brake for cross traffic. And... Yeah, and pretty safe as far as the technology goes. I guess on August 19th, today is the 20th, 21st, I don't know, the um, Volvo brand actually is recognized for the best uh, technology in a vehicle. They beat Tesla by uh, Wards. So Wards did a, uh, a review, and, and they basically called Volvo number one. So obviously, even though they're number one, there's still um, a lot of... Uh, debate about that, I think. But knowing what this car can do in traffic, right? We got the green thing. It won't switch lanes on its own. Stuff like that that the Mercedes could do. But I've tried it in a Mercedes and it never really works all the time. And when you do it in a Mercedes, you really need a lot of room anyway. So why would you need assistance to change lanes if you have plenty of room to do it on your own? I never really get that. Blind spot, you see the little orange worm there in the mirror. And it's all pretty cool. Car gets to just pace the vehicle in front. You can change the distance here with these uh, buttons here. And they're actual buttons. It's not like the new Mercedes where it's just one pad and it's kind of got like this fake button feel. But the Volvo does really want you to pay attention when you're driving along. You have to always have some steering input and we'll see how it drives here in this stop and go traffic as we approach this traffic. I know it will not stop for a completely stopped vehicle if you're coming up on one, so you do want to pay attention. But for these 20 inch Pirelli wheels, thank God they're not Goodyear's, but these 21 inch, sorry, 20 inch Pirellis, they are the P0s and they're very quiet. And when I'm driving along in here, you know, there's hardly any wind noise. You can see that if I show you the window here, you'll see it's double glazed right here. There's two, two pieces of glass sandwiched together. So it is a very quiet vehicle, especially in the city. And that allows me to enjoy the Bowers of Wilkins stereo even more. And so you could do things like go here and you can do full control over you know, through the Spotify app, the music you're going to play, or Pandora. The Pandora, you can see that icon there. It'll show the last two you've been on. So I was streaming Bluetooth before, and I was also listening to Pandora before. And obviously, if you switch to Pandora, it would show Spotify there. You just go back and forth between there. Otherwise, you can go to this screen, and you can choose uh, right there what you want to listen to. And then you can show driver performance, so you can see our average fuel economy and everything else going on. Still wants me to apply some steering. You do actually need to uh, move the steering wheel. You can't just touch it like you can in the Lexus, I think, which is the, uh, what do they call that? Uh, 
the terminology for the sensing. I forget right now. But anyway, this is stop and go traffic in in Austin, Texas. Any other city would be the same thing, basically. And the car's doing it on its own. I've got everything active, and I can just sit here and relax. If this was the inscription, I could uh, turn on the massage seat. And if it was too hot outside, I could turn on the venting as well. And uh, we have a separate compartment here for more storage. And the glove box has a lock on it. And it's pretty big. So there's that. And then, of course, we have the panoramic roof, which is huge and opens up the shade all the way to the back. That shade will auto-close if you turn on the feature in the system here. It'll auto close uh, to create shade in the car if it's hot out. So when you get in the car, it's already closed. I I go between opening all the shades and closing them all all the time. It's kind of fun, and you can actually control these shades and the sunroof from that back seat. I'll show you that later. And for now, I'll just close the shade because it's just too bright for me right now. All right. And this is the long wheelbase S90. We only get the long wheelbase here in America. And I'm going to go ahead and switch lanes. So you see, if those cars up there were completely stopped, I don't think the radar system would recognize that. And it wouldn't break in advance as the radar cruise would, but it would still break in advance at the last minute, actually, for the anti-collision stuff. And that is all set here. If we go down, we have settings. And then in those settings, we go to my car. And then it's in Telesafe. And then you can choose like city safety. I have it on early. Lane keeping is both assist and the warning, which is a vibrating in the steering wheel. And you know it's active because you see the uh, little lanes there. Although... There's lanes there, but then when we have the uh, aid here, it seems to be doing quite well in here right now, on its own. When the green steering wheel is on, I never really see those lanes light up in white. They would show orange if you were encroaching and the warning was on. Also, let's see, driver alert. It'll tell me when I want need to go to the uh, take a break if I'm like too tired or whatever. Or if I've been driving for too long, it'll say, hey, take a break. Uh, Mercedes does that. Roadside information. Now, it won't adjust the cruise control to the speed limit, but you can set it to warn you that you're going over the speed limit in f certain increments. And also, uh, it'll give you speed camera warning and road sign audio warning if you're really that inept. Also, let's see. It's doing quite well in here. Kind of hard to believe I'm actually driving in traffic right now. Let's see. Parking brake and suspension. Yes, this does have um, a air suspension. It's actually an air suspension that keeps the rear end level, so if you got passengers in the back and extra luggage, just like in the Volvo S90, uh, V90 wagon, which is the wagon version of this sedan, it keeps the vehicle level, and this car has the air suspension. So part of the other thing is a lot of people are like, oh, do I need the air? Do I really need it? And I would say, oh yeah, you do. Because it really levels out the vehicle, even in cornering, not, not only in the rear, but what, what happens in the rear, because this has such a long wheelbase, is that the front feels just more tied down when you're going through corners and when you're on the freeway. Also, in different drive modes, you still have the adaptive suspension too, so there are adjustable dampers that change when you change your drive mode into dynamic and stuff. And then you have an individual drive mode where you can choose like eco settings and then a stiffer suspension if you want. But comfort, which is the default every time you get in the vehicle, comfort is the way to go. This thing just sails so smoothly on the highway and on the regular roads. As a matter of fact, I won't wait till I get to Dallas to tell you, but this vehicle is the smoothest vehicle I've ever driven in Dallas. This, this suspension is bar none the best I've had so far in Dallas. And granted, I have driven a Bentley in Dallas, but the Bentley didn't cost $65,000 or 60 grand or whatever. So yeah, 
This is a this is an underdog right here. This vehicle is amazing. So what's even more shocking, maybe than anything else, is the fact that uh, this car is actually made in China, and it's put together basically like an iPhone. I cannot hear one single rattle. I do not see one scratch. I do not see anything wrong. There's nothing that's misfit in here. This car is built in the same factory that they're building that new Polestar uh, supercar that they have, which is that hybrid system, uh, 400-something horsepower monster. So, yes, this is an incredibly well-built vehicle. It is quiet, and there should be no reason why this wouldn't be on your list if you're shopping for a luxury sedan. It's just, it just seems to be like the car. Uh, this is actually probably like the biggest surprise I've driven in a couple of years. Being able to just cruise down the freeway here is, is really something. So I'm going to pause this video right now and uh, get through some of Austin and then I'll catch up with you as we get out of town and kind of open it up a little bit more and we'll see what happens to the fuel economy. As you can see, my range there says 320, but I'm sure that'll adjust as we put more miles on the vehicle. It only has 1,100 miles, 1,172, something like that. So as we get more comfortable with this vehicle down the way, we have about 250 miles to go. We got plenty of range to do it. We'll see what kind of fuel economy we're getting. Actually, I can change that by going here. And I can go to... There we go. So now you'll see 25.8 down there. And if I get out of this screen, go over here. Okay, 19.9. .9. So this screen is always going to be different than what shows down there because this is for the trip, and it's an average over 10 minutes. If I show the preferences, we can see... Oh, sorry, 10 miles. And so it'll... I didn't reset it either, so I forgot to do that. But we'll reset it now, actually. That'll, it'll average out a little bit better that way. Okay, so your, your trip will update every 10 miles here. And then down there, that's sort of since our reset at the fuel stop when we started the journey. So this is a little off, but sorry about that. And yeah, got our map up here. We can go full screen if you want. There is no Google Earth on here, and I'm not bothered by that. I get to see a very clear map and a lot of good street names on there. And this map here also adjusts. You can't zoom in or out of this. Uh, but it will auto zoom in and out on its own depending on the speed you're going, but you actually see the street names here. Uh, some cars like the BMW M235i that I drove, it won't show the street names and you cannot control the zoom. So this is a happy medium. It's not like what the Audi can do, but still pretty, pretty decent. I'm going to eventually find a way to turn on my cruise control again. There we go. Press this one. All right. It's back on its own. And there's Austin. So you know you're in Austin because you see the traffic. And it is a Friday afternoon, so hopefully it's just smooth sailing to uh, Dallas. All right, I'll catch up with you in a second. We're moving right along now. We've done 30.8 miles. We're averaging 29.3 mpgs, and we're doing 80 miles an hour. And I went ahead and moved it from the autopilot to the standard radar cruise. And uh, now you'll see I got my lanes back in there, and it's still actually keeping the vehicle in the lanes. What it's not doing is it's not following the vehicle in front. And it's uh, well, let's see how this happens. Oh, come on in. Anyway, we move over and then slows down when we get closer to the vehicle. I got it set to two, so if I increase that, we get to five bars. I think you can see the reflection. There you go. And, um, yeah, we're just moving right along. I'm going to see if we can hit 30 MPGs, 
which I'm not trying to do a fuel economy run. This has just been with cruise control, 10 miles an hour over the speed limit, but still doing the flow of traffic and keeping a bit of a distance here, but we'll still pass in the left lane, obviously. And uh, I'll catch up with you when we get to about Temple. What I want to do is show you here, the air conditioning actually has a, uh, a filter system and everything, and it's you see this thing called Clean Zone, and it, it's automatically monitoring the air, and it'll do the auto circulation and everything, but it's also filtering out all the pollutants and stuff, so when that is blue, that text is blue, it's ensuring that the cabin is, has clean air. If it's gray, usually that happens when you open a window or something. So if I t tilt open the sunroof, that'll turn gray in a little bit. Also, there we go, it just went gray. Which means that the air inside is no longer like going to be completely clean because you can actually see kind of that haze out there on the horizon. If I swipe it this way, you'll see we have a rear climate as well, which I can turn off, but it's also sync to 70 degrees. And those rear climate controls are back here, because we also have rear heated seats. So, uh, they're locked. I don't know how to unlock them, but we'll just stick with this. I'll close the sunroof again, and we'll plow right along. 29.3, we'll see if we can get to 30 by the time we get to Temple, which is probably 50 miles. So either Temple or the 100 mile update, I'll give you a, a better idea of what's going on. Well, you'll notice I'm doing 68 miles an hour and that's because there's a lot of traffic. Everyone's getting out of town or something. So I've set the cruise back down to 75 from 80 and the fuel economy is 31.7 so far on this trip average over 55.1 miles so yeah if you do the speed limit and just cruise and let the car do all the work and enjoy the great seats and the fantastic stereo and this awesome air suspension you'll arrive before you left that's what you'll feel like i mean it's just so relaxing in here and i don't know like i've never really considered Volvo to be uh, like the underdog uh, Audi A8 S-Class BMW 7 Series competitor but yeah here it is quite the vehicle and I think you'll agree it's uh, a shocker and I think we can we can probably hit 33 MPG's average we'll find out it should be interesting to see what's, what this thing's capable of with all-wheel drive. I also want to take this opportunity to show you how this radar cruise works. Uh, I'm behind a slow vehicle. You can see my cruise is set to 75. I'm doing 64. We're going up a hill. I got the distance set, so we're pacing that truck in front of us. But let's just say I want to move over. I can't because someone's in my blind spot. There he is. So, when it's clear to move, what I'll do is I'll signal, and what happens when I signal is the vehicle will actually speed up when you hit the left turn signal because it knows you're trying to pass. And some of the vehicles do that. The Dodge Durango RT I had did that. So here we go. We look, it's clear, signal left, and 65, 66, 67, 68. And it's not because we were clear. It's because we had signaled and moved over. And now we're pacing the vehicle in front, and it's not going to exceed 73, even though we're set to 75. And the speed limit is 75. So we're just cruising along, doing the full speed limit here so far. And I'll get you more stats as we get to the 100-mile mark. So in about 36 miles, I'll give you an update. But you're going to like it. And then once I get past the 100-mile mark, I think I'm just going to make it towards Waco so I can grab my lunch because it is past 12.50, so yeah, it's definitely lunchtime, and I'm kind of behind today, so need to get to Dallas, need to get on with my day, but at the speed limit, or, you know, whatever the speed is that the guy in front of us is doing, 69, you know, this is what we're doing so far. So eventually, when I get away from this traffic and do the speeds I normally do, 
we'll see what happens. And uh, between the 100 mile mark and Waco. When I get to Waco, it'll be completely different. Trust me. Let's move over. See, it won't speed up when you move over to the right. All right, back on with the tunes. Bam! 100.1 miles, and we averaged 33.5 MPGs. And as you can tell, out here in the northern part of Texas, or kind of central north, whatever, it, it is kind of hilly, so it's not like it's perfectly flat desert area, whatever you think Texas might be. That's West Texas. That's like 500 miles that way. So, yeah, 33.5 is pretty damn good in a large sedan like this one. And I'll show you the back seat when we get lunch. I've said that before. I'm going to say it again because this was a really cool uh, atmosphere back there. So, I just want to show you quickly... The window sticker I found in the glove box, and it actually says 31 on the highway, which, you know, for an all-wheel drive vehicle, not bad. And there's the performance right there. So, yeah, pretty good. And there we go. I was going to show you one other thing, but I forgot what that was going to be. Oh, yeah, the multiple displays. Well, um, I'll do it right now. So if we go down here, we go to settings, we go to my car, displays, display themes. Now we can change the way this center map area looks slightly. So we can change it to glass, minimalistic, we can go to performance, and then chrome rings. And that's basically all it can do. However, if we get out of that, and then we go to here, and we put it into eco mode, you'll see that the display changes. Eco mode is interesting because it detunes the air conditioning a little bit, but it also changes the throttle mapping and everything, puts you in the highest gear possible, the lowest RPM. It will also go into coasting mode, so mostly on the city streets, if you are just coasting to a stoplight or a stop sign, for instance, or just cruising on a street that might have just some sort of a, uh, just sort of a uh, downhill uh, coasting aspect to it, it'll actually end up in neutral and just coast down the hill. It's pretty cool. I don't know how lucky we'll get with that here on the freeway, but it'll say coasting and all that. Plus, when you put it in eco mode, it goes into auto stop start mode. And then if you take it out of eco mode, you go back here to comfort, it'll go back to the way it was, and it will also revert to the stop-start mode that you had it on last time in this mode. So you don't have to continuously hit all the buttons and fiddle around. The Volvo is smart enough to remember the settings as you had them, and we'll keep them that way, which is great. All right, so I'm coming up on Waco, and... It's probably a good 15 miles before I stop for my lunch. And 33.5 is the fuel average since the departure from the gas station. If I go here, we'll see, swipe this way, driver performance. It says 34.6 since we reset it somewhere around mid, mid downtown Austin, somewhere over there. And you can see it's pretty average. That's with cruise control doing all the work and staying really much at the speed limit. Even though some people are going faster than that now, which is usually the case. Somewhere around 80, 85 is pretty bad average here in Texas. 90 is not unheard of either, nor is 100. So if we go back to this, boom, you'll see in our apps, we also have something called weather, boom. It'll pull up the weather and tell me what it's like here. And if we had the navigation set to a home or an office or somewhere we're going to, you can actually check the weather for your destination. So if you're driving to, like, a road trip to Florida or Colorado or something like that, you can actually see where your uh, what your weather is like. You can go here to places, and then it will say, like, near destination. There you go. So very convenient, very very road trip friendly in here. 
What I don't have is the um, satellite connection, which is over here, Travel Link, which would tell me like fuel prices and movie tickets and all this other stuff. And it's filled, it's provided by uh, Sirius XM. So I'm not subscribed to that for some reason, but whatever. And just go back to performance. So whatever app you were on last is the last screen or the, the bottom tile here. The other three are the cards. The other three here are always going to be navigation, media, or radio, and phone. Beverly Hills, look at that. All right, I'll catch up with you when I get my food, and I'll show you what the back seat's all about. Well, we're just now in heavy traffic here in Waco. <laughs> there is a lot of road construction, actually. I should have gotten off the road. It did not tell me to get off the road because I didn't put in a destination, so it wasn't able to gonna say, hey, pull off here. So I am going to... Well, I've already got radar crews on, which is great, because when you're not expecting it, you're kind of already prepared for this. The question is, do I get off or not? Because they've torn up a lot of roads around here. I need to get off in... one mile. Hmm... Well, the off-ramp is also blocked. Okay. What I think I'll do is stay on the freeway. That's what I'll do. I'll stay on the freeway. And then get off at one mile at 8th Street. Cool. Good plan, good plan. Alright, so this should give you an idea of the construction that's going around here. Baylor University is right here. And on the other side is lunch. So I'm just going to get through all this. I'm glad I didn't head, uh, fall for that head fake with the traffic back there. So I got to tell you, though, with these 20-inch wheels and these rough roads and this air suspension, I'm not bothered at all. So a very similar car to this, not necessarily in the price range either, but power-wise and purpose-wise, is the Chrysler 300. And you can get 20-inch wheels on that. And it comes with the V6. You can also get the V8. The V6 has 301 horsepower. 305, somewhere around there. 306, maybe. And the Volvo has a little bit more than that. But an air suspension. And they both have panel roof. Um, this stereo in here is much better. But, of course, you're talking about a different price range, too. But there's, there's a lot to be said about both of those vehicles and man look at all that road construction it's been going on for a little bit now as you can tell I'm rambling I'm gonna grab lunch I'll continue rambling when I get back on the road after I show you the back seat during lunch real quick while I'm still stuck at this red light you'll see 34 mpg average uh, there you go 34 over 109.3 miles. So it's going to get worse from there, trust me. <laughs> but that's not bad. You know what you're capable of here. And that's, you could probably beat that too if you were like really trying, if you were like maybe in eco mode or whatever. So there we go, green light finally. All right, it's going to get worse than that because I'm doing uh, lunch in the vehicle to show you the back seat and stuff and we sit there idling with the AC on probably for a good half hour and uh, keeping it lit um, and then when we get back on the freeway I won't be doing the speed limit I'll just be doing the flow traffic and stuff so we'll keep it at that oh yeah there's one area here because this is Waco uh, you might wonder oh that's why people have a lot of trucks in Texas yeah it's because of all this construction I think Texas is Native American for under construction but let's go ahead and pull in here uh, chick-fil-a and get some lunch which means i think we got to do some off-road right here yep all right those of you in europe would be like that's a freaking road yep this is what we do here in america not bad no clunking no bopping i don't know how to get over all this here 
How do we get over this hill? Any bottoming out? Nope. Should have put the 360 camera on that. Anyway, one more right turn. And we'll be golden. All right, well, the traffic here is ridiculous. So I think I'm going to ditch this place and get my uh, alternative, which is going to be... down there. So we'll get out of here and we'll go right over there because that is the other beautiful part here is we have options. So traffic in Waco is disgusting just like Austin. It's another college town. Probably explains a lot but when it comes to food um, in, during these days where you can really just do drive through only out here that was picking up the bottoming out, basically. But I didn't scrape, so that's good. I'll get lunch here instead. Not a big deal. While we're in the drive-thru, I'll show you. There's a feature here. Boom! Auto brake hold. So that'll stay on. And you'll see that green A there. That's for the auto brake hold. Oh, lordy. Lordy, lordy, it's hot out. Well, uh, so you just keep your foot off the brake, put your foot on the gas, it lets go, you stop again, it stays on until you disable it. I will say, you know, I'm not a fan of gloss black piano trim, so that's kind of annoying. Okay, I gotta place my order. Okay, I got my food here, and what I'm gonna do is actually sit in back and have some of my lunch and show you the rest of what's back there. Hold on a second, let me get the schmutz off the camera. Okay, so the drawback right now is that you cannot control the audio or anything from the back seat because there is no audio control. So I wish there was either built into the back uh, armrest there or even here uh, in this display, which does the air conditioning and stuff. I wish there was a way to do uh, audio controls, even just to raise, lower the volume, or next track, or whatever, so uh, they don't have that in this car, part of why I think the price is lower, kind of underdog, but still you get like that, that whole large rear seat kind of experience, so not bad, but let me go back there right now, and I'll do it, I'll show you what it's like. Okay, I'm coming to you from the back seat this time, and the engine's running. I can show you, I don't know if you can see that up there. I think that says 103 degrees. Can't really focus on it from here. 103? No, 104 degrees. So it's hot out here. But I'm in the back seat. I'm gonna have my lunch. Okay, got my food here. Got a nice tray here for my phone. My phone fits in there perfectly. Cup holders. No audio controls, that's the only downside, so I got the music muted, because I can record this for you. Air vent, air vents down here, and we have the sunroof, right? So, first thing I did was get in and lock the door, so when that's on, boom, doors are locked. And, obviously, you just pull the door handle to uh, get out. But, a lot of cars don't have door lock buttons back here anymore, and I noticed that in the Mercedes GLS 63, there was no door lock button. Kind of uh, worrying, actually, because it means you can't use the back seat when you want to use the back seat and still say, like, oh, we got the air on, we're going to just be back here and be safe. Uh, nope. Got the shades up in the back and everything, and although I don't have audio controls, what I do have are controls here, so... There's this control, this button here, which lowers that and raises it. Okay. And then I have this, which controls this shade here on this side. And it also controls the window, right? You've seen that before. A8, S-Class, 7 Series, they all have that same. You could do it there. And you can also roll down that window from here. So, pretty cool. So the right the right side uh, has way more control than the left. Because the left side only controls their own window. And 
I know that on the 7 Series and the S-Class, they'd have two, one to control the left and the one to control the right side. Here in the Volvo, and I guess it's, again, because of the price point, we're under 65000 here, that's uh, stuck to that door. But not bad, though. Also, I can open the shade from back here all the way. So there we go, in the right rear I can open all the shades, and then I could also control the sunroof from here. Push down would tilt it up, so you can see there it's open. And then if I press it again down, this one here, it'll open the sunroof. So I get some fresh 104 degree air in here. Or I can say, ah, screw it. And I just pull it up and let it go, and it's like an auto open feature and an auto close feature. So again, if I want to tilt it, just hold it down a little bit. There you go. And last thing is this button here, which looks like the same joystick for the uh, mirrors on the driver's seat. If I just push it forward, the front passenger seat moves up. And now I have all the leg room I could possibly want. And then if I move it to the left, the seat back will move forward too. So pretty cool for a road trip, wouldn't you say? Sort of like the uh, Kia K900. Kia K900 had that same feature. Now I can obviously cross my legs. I can still cross my legs in here regardless. And with my, with my, there we go. With my body all the way back, I can put my arm forward and not touch the B-pillar. So the only thing that has done that before in a, in a vehicle I've had was the 1994 S500, the Mercedes S-Class where you could sit back and still not touch that B-pillar. I have that much room back here. Plus, now I can control the seat from here, which is really cool. The one thing I can't do, though, is recline these rear seats. I wish there was a way to just, you know, get a two or three more inches more rake, or less rake, whatever you want to say, uh, more relaxation. But you'll see there are buttons back there. Those buttons, one to two, allow you to um, lower the headrests, and then t pull the seat forward. And I don't want to show that to you now because I'm back here. But And then, of course, there's a middle seat. And the middle seat, I've actually raised the headrest here. But you could lower it manually. Uh, it's hard to do with one hand, but there you go. And, yeah, I already showed you this. So, All right, I'm going to have my lunch. And I'll catch back up with you when I'm on the road. Okay, this this is an homage to that channel, Bjorn Nyland, where the guy travels through the Norway and drives electric vehicles and eats terrible food. I'm doing this for you, Bjorn, if you're watching. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I don't know. So this is how we do it in America. Obviously, it's all fried food. And then a little bit of vegetables over there. But keep in mind that here in Texas, chicken is a vegetable. Okay, I'm done with my lunch. What I'm going to do is try a few things here. Uh, let me grab the key. So the engine's still running. It says 107 on the thermometer uh, for the temperature outside. And it's been pretty cool in here. I'm able to turn up the fan speed here. We're at 70 degrees. And it's been very comfortable here, even with that sunroof cracked open and this back window cracked open. So let me just close this window. And then close the sunroof. Now I could move that seat back into its position by moving this control this way, and then that control that way. I wanna try, I wanna see if I can open the door. I wanna try a couple things while I do this. I have the key with me. <clears throat> okay, so, car's running. If I hit one, yep. Okay, so pressing one, it goes back to its position. So I'll let it do that while the door's open. If I close the door, will it stop it? Nope, it's still doing it. Okay. Second thing is, can I lock it? No. If I hit the button, will it lock while the engine's running? No. So keep that in mind. If you're the kind who likes to keep the car running while you run in and get the mail or whatever, uh... You can't lock it from here while it's running. Let me just throw this away right there. 
Okay, so we're gonna hit the road now. And should be fun. Purrs like a kitten out here, doesn't it? You'll see here full LED active high beam. Headlight washers. Oh, let's hit the road. By the way, our design steering wheel. No soft closed doors. I wish it had that though. All right, let me grab my drink. All right, <clears throat> back in the captain's chair and we will hit the road. I'll catch you with you when I get back on the freeway. 31.7 MPGs. In case you're wondering before we get it there on the freeway, what all that idling uh, did was it, it drained the MPGs a little bit. Obviously we're sitting there whirring away at whatever, half a gallon an hour. So we're now back. I'm not gonna go this direction. I'm not gonna go off-roading. I'm gonna go that way and then go towards the next main road. So uh, this will be a while. So I'm gonna get back to you. All right, back on the road, doing 83, 82 miles an hour, and quite smooth. You'll notice no real road noise, no real wind noise. We're just cruising right along. So, in comfort mode. Eventually, I'll change that drive mode, but let me just get to a little bit more of a clearing, some more space. All right, I hate it when that happens. You get three aside and they just go all the same speed. Um, the truck on the left isn't going fast enough. The Honda on the right seems to just want to block everybody out. Cock blocking is the term there. And what I'll do is I'll put it in drive mode, dynamic, and you'll see that it says dynamic down there on the tachometer in the instrument cluster. And the suspension firms up the transmission, which is an ace and eight-speed automatic, uh, drops a gear and it holds the revs a little longer. And now it's clear on the right, so I mean, there's really nowhere to go. But it's just an effortless highway bomber. This vehicle it makes things so much easier. And yes, you can get the Polestar version, which adds a little bit more power and changes the mapping on the transmission as well as the throttle. But there's also a T8 version of this car. Now, if you watch my other videos, I've done two other Volvo road trips. Two of those were S60s. One was a T5, which is like the front wheel drive, 250 horsepower version, which was great. Better than an Audi A4, in my opinion. And then I did a T8, which was a 400, actually Polestar tune, 415 horsepower, 495 pound-feet of torque, little monster there. That was also the S60. But you can get that same power in this model, this S90. It's hard to find. Even the S90 is hard to find because they only sold 35 of these in January in the United States. And that includes the inscription and the R-Line. So just the S90 in general. So this is a hard to find vehicle. If you're looking for one right now, you basically are probably stuck with what's left of the lot. And then there's 2021s coming, which will have USB-C uh, LED tail lights that are a little bit more redesigned and then a wireless charger that goes down there. Although you can get an aftermarket wireless charger that goes right in there and it looks just like factory. So, you know, it is what it is. All right, so we're just gonna cruise along that Honda's still back there cock blocking in the far left lane. And we're doing the speed of traffic here, 92. Average miles per gallon is 30.1. But yeah, this is a good way to go, isn't it? <laughs> Only in Texas. All right, when we get to you know, 130 miles, so when I get to 200 miles, I'll give you an update. Uh, I'm sure that'll drop to like 25 MPGs because I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be so like 
lenient like I was before. I'm going to be probably just moving with this traffic. Not passing it, but staying up with it. We'll see what happens. So, on this stereo, we have different sound modes. If I go here to sound experience, you'll see we have individual stage, but we also have studio, and then concert hall. Concert hall adds a lot of echo, and studio is mainly like the in-house experience. If I change it there back to surround sound basically hopefully you heard a difference I don't want to get flagged for copyright so that's about as much as I can do but it's very crisp, very clear lots of great bass and this is the best modern day stereo system I've had it's fantastic alright, I'm going to get on with my driving the uh, dynamic mode you know, you can cruise along quite well. You'll do 102 and you won't even know it. It's just so smooth in here and quiet, actually. And that's kind of what you want when you're going long range. These great, comfortable seats and this fantastic stereo and no road noise, very little things bothering you. And yeah, it's a good way to go. So, let's just say you don't want to stay in dynamic mode. What you have is individual mode that you have to configure, but if you go here, you go to individual, boom. And now, we're in the setting that I wanted for this vehicle to be in, and I'll show you in a second what that means. So, if we go here, settings, and it goes to my car, individual drive mode, and here we can configure... Um, eco comfort. Oh no, we're getting blasted by sand. Let me just pass this. I've had to replace the windshield on an S60 and it was $1,650. Luckily, insurance covered it, but oof, that's not fun. So I pass these trucks because there's no point in sitting here waiting for a rock to hit you. Anyway, you can change your driver display. You can show eco or dynamic or comfort. to get around the trucks. Okay, and then uh, steering force, low, medium, high, powertrain characteristics, brake characteristics, and then suspension control, and then you can turn on or off eco climate or auto stop start. So a lot of good individual aspects here, and if you don't want e individual mode available, you just uncheck that box, which is, I think, by default when you get into Volvo. So preset is comfort, driver display is comfort, steering force is low, if I change it to high, yep, steering force is, there's much more straight line stability there. Powertrain is comfort, so it affects torque and acceleration. So I don't want to use a lot of fuel, so I'll just, I'll keep it in comfort. Eco is way too uh, bougie for the freeway. Brake characteristics, dynamic, that's great. Suspension, dynamic, that's great, because now I can have just standard acceleration, torque, uh, you know, drivability. And then firmer suspension on the freeway, which is great. And I'll keep it at that. Close. And it's all in real time. Alright. That's that. I'm trying to figure out what else I can show you. Let me uh, turn the music back on and drive and I'll figure out what's next. She lives me. Alright, as you can tell, it's been an enjoyable drive. I almost don't want it to end, so I might slow down a little bit so I can enjoy more of the stereo and the seats and this wonderful day. So I will catch up with you sooner than later. And just like that, I'm out of storage space on my phone. Oh, you know, I really hate it when that happens. I edit, and I run out of footage, and I go, 
how do I wrap this up? Actually, that's never happened before. This is the first time in like six years I've had an issue losing footage and running out of storage space and all this other stuff. I think I just had that good of a time in that car, which should give you an idea of exactly what that trip went like. So here I am stuck editing with no ending. And all I can say is thank you for watching. Definitely consider the S90 if you want to upgrade from a Avalon or a Passat, or maybe you just can't quite reach the Lexus LS, Audi A8, BMW 7 Series, Mercedes S-Class territory. The Volvo S90 looks good, feels good, and the price is just right. And there's also a 400 horsepower version, just like that Volvo S60 I drove uh, a couple videos back, if you look at my channel. And that's also worth ordering. So there you go. Quite the car, quite the trip, quite the channel, wouldn't you agree? Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. And all my videos uh, support my channel. So the views create monetization that pays for these road trips. I don't get paid by manufacturers. I don't get paid by dealers. And it's all you. You're, you're all the ones who support me. So thanks for watching. And I've have, I'll have more videos on the way. I don't know what it's going to be, but it'll happen soon. See you later.